Jocelyn is going through a complicated time in her life, and she meets Tedros, Abel's character, and turns her world upside down. She's feeling creatively stuck, and she starts to seek inspiration in some dark places. Part of what we're exploring in episode two is what happens when someone is so tough on themselves to the point where it becomes self-sabotage. We pulled up different film noirs from Out of the Past with Jane Greer to Sharon Stone and Basic Instinct. These iconic female characters who have this poise to them and unearth truths and the darkness in their life. Do you trust me? This is a world that I have not been a part of, and obviously I wanted to make sure that the character felt real. There was dance classes and singing lessons and piano lessons even at one point. How could I play a pop star without thinking about the amazing, incredible pop stars that have come before Jocelyn? Jocelyn is a symbol. Jocelyn is the person that determines for a generation what sounds good, what looks good. When we first meet Jocelyn, she is definitely more inspired by a late 90s, early 2000s pop star. Think Britney Spears, think Christina Aguilera. The lip liner is very specific, and we really used a darker tone around her lip that reminds me of the 90s. And then we did our own modern spin on it where we connect the Cupid's bow, which gives an old Hollywood vibe too. In Jocelyn's world, all of the moving parts of this machine that's around her all the time, and how many people are depending on her and how much pressure that can be. Talia is coming into these spaces as an outsider. She wants to know more about what's going on behind closed doors, not just with Jocelyn, but with Jocelyn's team. You don't have to say much, you don't have to do much, you just have to watch and let people tell on themselves. Leia is Jocelyn's assistant and best friend, but no matter how pure you want the relationship to be, everyone has their own motives. Nikki is often the one who has to just say it's not working. She gave Jocelyn many opportunities to succeed. If Jocelyn is being self-destructive, someone else will step in. Mom? Someone who was a huge pillar in Jocelyn's life was her mother. And once her mother passed, Destiny and Hyam stepped in. To some people, it will come across as manipulative, but I think Destiny's main goal is to make sure Jocelyn's safe. Xander and Jocelyn have a very complicated relationship. He's her best friend and also her creative director. Where that tension comes from between them creatively is that a lot of the time, I think she doesn't know what she wants. That's kind of the scary thing, is people just get lost. All right, people, let's make the dream happen. It felt very immersive to shoot that music video. It felt really real. It felt like we were doing a play, almost. I like to approach all of my choreographic work from a perspective of trying to create something timeless. So I even look at paintings for inspiration, and Lily reminded me of Botticelli's Venus, so she even does poses like that. Lily sat for almost four hours while all of those extensions were glued into her head because she had to dance for days. I really leaned into the 90s era of pop. She controls the dancers, but then she also lets herself be manipulated. There's almost no awareness that the camera's going. It doesn't matter where it is, she stays true to the emotion of the character and plays that. It was heartbreaking to shoot because I have so much empathy for her. Even though at that point she is completely unable to go on, I think that it's really hard for her to finally walk off that stage. 